my dear sewing friends, it's Elisa here with Thoughtful Creativity. Thank you so much for tuning in. And today in this video, I have for you five really quick and easy, fun projects, useful projects too, you know that's really important. And those projects you can sew, sell, and gift. Now, a lot of them you will be able to complete, I would say in about 10 minutes or so. But of course, don't forget that it all depends on your pace of sewing, on your experience. So just remember to have fun and to enjoy your creativity. Now, in the past, as you might know, I've done quite a lot of these videos and I used a ton of different materials, you know, from old denim to cork fabric to like old towels and things like that. And today it's kind of like a mixed bag of everything. So I'm pretty sure grab whatever you have, we will be able to make it work. And I think I forgot to mention that some of these are no so, and that's the first project that we're gonna start with. We're going to get started with a circle shape. And just to make things so much easier, you can go ahead and grab a small plate or maybe a cup and just trace around it for that circle shape. For myself, I made two options, one just as a circle and the other one a circle with a fancier, wavier edges. And you will see why in just a moment. Now the inspiration for it comes from Anthropology website. As you know, that is a fashion retailer and I don't recall that I ever bought anything from them, but I often use their website as sort of a point of inspiration for bold and interesting prints and just unexpected combinations in fashion. And I stumbled upon this cord organizer idea. Now I will let you be the judge of whether it's useful or not. I've been using it right now for about a week. Um, is it nice to have it? Yes. Could I live without it? Yes. <laughs> So again, I will let you be the judge of it, but I've seen a ton of these on the internet. So if there's supply, I gather that there must be the demand as well. Now, both of these are about four and a half inches across. So those are the dimensions that I'm going to be using. You can use whatever fits best for you. As for the materials, you can use two layers of medium weight fabric with an interfacing between them and you can sew them together or you can use leather or faux leather. I will be using faux leather sheets just because the original inspiration piece is also made from faux leather like material. From here, it's pretty straightforward. Just cut out your shape, trace it on top of your material and cut it out. Once you have cut your shape, the next thing for us to do and the last thing for us to do is to attach some sort of closure to our cord organizer. Now the original on the website actually has a snap right over here and fast forward 20 minutes I did install a snap but um, there's one thing that I noticed and I think the material is a little bit too thin for the snap therefore it, it caused a rip. I'm not sure if you can see that guys but right over here there's a rip right around the snap. So I just don't think that the snap is the right decision for this particular material that I'm using right over here. Since having a little kid, I grew very fond of Velcro. <laughs> so I installed little Velcro dots and these already have glue on, on the other side of them so you don't have to do anything else. Just place them, press them, and that's it. And they hold up really well. And I think these are readily available at stores like Dollar Store, Walmart, on Amazon, so you can find them anywhere. But here are two cord organizers, anthropology style, that you can make literally in minutes. Now this next idea on my list is also inspired by anthropology and I truly think that this one has a ton of potential. You know, partially because I feel like people are finally resuming their travel plans and also this is such a multifunctional item. Now I know that on the website it says tech organizer, but don't let that box you into that one definition. Now for example, think about the same idea, the same concept, but for a makeup organizer or for example example, an organizer for artists. Like in my case, I'm not really that big into tech. I'm not really that big into makeup, but I do have a ton of brushes that I would love to make some sort of carrier for, let's say when I'm going and painting somewhere on the go. So that's exactly what we're going to do right now. 
I think this could be a really great project for repurposed denim. Besides, I have this kind of like a cut off leg from the previous repurposed denim project. I made an apron from old jeans, also a bucket hat, and a little dress for my daughter. So it's really great to use up the leftovers that I have. I'm going to choose those brushes that I use most often and the ones that I take with me all the time. And again, you can create this organizer for whatever that you feel would suit the needs of you, of the recipient of your gift, or whatever you're making this for. The concept is going to be the same. The only thing that's going to change is the measurements. After measuring my brushes, I came to a conclusion that the dimensions of my wrap-up pouch are going to be just a little bit bigger than a regular printer sheet. You know, just a regular A4 or a letter size sheet, just a little bit taller. Now the denim is going to be for the outside of the project and for the inside of the project, just choose a nice color or something that would really work with the idea that you're going for. First, I wanted to get the printed fabric and then I decided, you know what? I won't really be able to see my brushes too well on something that's super patterned or super bright. So I just went for plain white linen. Now let me give you the breakdown of project pieces. On the outside, like we spoke before, I'm using repurposed denim. On the inside, just white linen, and they're both cut at the same size. Now, if you take my brush, you will see that my rectangle is just a slightly bigger on top and the bottom, just to allow some room. I also decided to make a shield like this, kind of like a little guard. If you unfold it, it gives you about four inches. If you fold it, it will be two inches wide. And that will do two things for my particular design. Number one, it will prevent the brushes from falling out. Out. And number two, it will absorb any additional moisture from the brushes or any additional pigment. So that way they won't stain anything in my purse or my bag. Now the shield is going to go on top like this. And then instead of pockets, I decided to go for the elastic system. And the way it's going to work is I'm going to stitch across and my brushes are going to go like so. That's it, easy peasy. Now the first thing that I want to do is to sew the shield. I'm going to place it right sides together like so, and I'm going to stitch the short end with a seam allowance of your choice. So let's go ahead and stitch both of the ends and then onto the next step. I'm going to be stitching just with a straight stitch back stitching at the beginning and at the end. Once that is done, let's go ahead and clip the corners, snap all the loose threads, and then we will turn it right side out. At this point, if you're using a fabric that needs a good pressing, that would be your next step. I'm using linen, so it's really easy to finger press it into the shape that you need and want. So once that is done, it will look like this. Let's go ahead and grab these two pieces. Go ahead and place them wrong sides together, like so. And then let's go ahead and grab the shield. As you can see, my shield now is not as wide as the actual body of the project, and that's exactly what I want. Next one, let's go ahead and pin these together so that way it just kind of stays all put and uh, doesn't flop around. Now, somewhere in the middle, I'm gonna go ahead and take the elastic and place it like so. Then after securing the ends of the elastic, I'm going to take the objects that I'm actually going to be putting into this wrap. In my case, those are going to be paint brushes. And I'm going to try to determine how wide I need to make the stitches on the elastic in order for the brushes to go in, for it not to be too tight, not too loose, and to be just right. And I'm determined that half an inch is actually a great measurement for any thickness of the brushes that I have. After that, the first thing that I want to do, I'm just going to go ahead and base the guard to the top of my wrap and that is just an easy step. I usually try to base pretty close to the edge so that way once we're ready to move onto the bias tape, you won't be able to see that stitching. Now I will go ahead and secure the edges of the elastic first and once that is done, I'm ready to move on and stitch down these little sections. All I'm doing is kind of like the long version of the back stitch. I'm gonna stitch down and here you will see I'm gonna stitch back. And once the first one is done, I'm gonna go ahead and repeat that for all of the other ones. But first, I wanna double check that it is indeed the same width that I want it to be and my actual brush fits in there really nicely. So now that I'm made sure, let's go ahead and complete the rest of them. Once you have completed all of the sections that you wanted on your elastic, make sure that you tidy up all of the loose threads and now we're ready to move on onto one of the final steps and that is attaching the bias tape. 
Two important things to note here. Number one, I actually went ahead and I rounded the corners of the rectangle so that way it's easier for us to attach this bias tape in a really neat manner. Number two, when attaching the bias tape, I want to make sure that I don't catch this little shield or guard part on the top because otherwise if I sew it down together with the bias tape, I won't be able to flip it out. So I wanna make sure that I don't catch any corners of the shield or this guard as I'm sewing the bias tape down. And I'm going to apply this bias tape all the way around, starting by sewing it down to the white part of my project, just like you see me do on a screen. After attaching the bias tape, what I want to do here is tidy up the seam allowances, since denim can create quite a bit of bulk, and what I want right now is to roll over that bias tape to the denim side, cover the original stitching, and actually attach the bias tape as the last step. And tidying up those seam allowances will help me to do that. After that, I have one last thing left to do and that is attaching the ties so that way once I roll up my little pouch, I can actually tie those ties around to secure the whole pouch and prevent it from opening up in my purse. And you can decide on which side you would like to do that. It can be a little ribbon, it can be the same bias tape that you have folded together and sewn down, whatever works for you. Now if you need more instructions on how to attach bias tape in such manner, I will leave instructional videos for you guys in the info box below so that way if you need the reference, you will find it there. To attach the tie, I simply found the middle of the tie and then I stitched it down to one of the edges of the roll-up pouch by simply doing a couple of back and forth stitches. All right, let's give it a go. This next one is really easy and really straightforward. And as always, we're kind of working with primary shapes. We worked with circle first, then the rectangle, and we're back to working with a circle. Now, I would love to give you the concept of this idea, and then I'm really excited where you're going to take it because you can really add a lot of bells and whistles to it or just leave it as simple as it is. And that is a circular pouch like that, which is basically a circle. We're gonna be using a plate in order to trace that circle, and you can sew it up in about 10 minutes or so. It really is straightforward. Now, lately we've been doing a lot of pretty big projects, and I'll channel and big projects are a lot of fun but small projects and quick projects are even better so without any further ado let's jump right into it to get started with our circle pouch first we need to make a template and determine the size the template of course is going to be a circle and for that I'm just gonna go ahead and grab a plate that I already have at home and simply trace around it now the dimensions of the circle across are eight and three quarter inches or 22 centimeters now remember that this can be any size that you would like. You can make it small, like this one. You can make it medium size for larger accessories, or you can make it really large and let's say you turn it into a play mat for your kid. You will need to cut two circles from woven fabric. Here I'm using medium weight cotton. And as you can see, I have cut my circles a little bit bigger than the actual plate because we need to add seam allowances to our project. Now I'm gonna go ahead and grab my measuring tape and I've also marked the center of the circle and I'm going to measure from one point all the way to the other point. You can also just measure the full circumference of the circle and then just divide that in half. We will need this measurement in order to cut these two strips of fabric as you see on the screen. Each one of them is a half of the circumference from this point all the way to this point. As for the width of each strip, it will depend on what kind of string or what kind of ribbon you're going to be using. I'm using this cord, therefore each of the strips is two inches wide, including the seam allowance. Now I'm gonna go ahead and fold in twice each one of the short ends of each strip. I can finger press it or you can also just press it with an iron. And then with a straight stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and secure all of those ends in order to make sure that they don't fray. Of course, don't forget to back stitch at the very beginning and at the very end of your seams. 
Now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and take our strips. As you can see right over here, I have also pressed them in half so that way it's just easier for us to work. And all of the short ends have been finished and hemmed. Now, as for your circles, we want to make sure that our circles are placed right sides together. So if they're not, go ahead and place them right sides together. Don't forget to mark the middle of your circle as you see me do on your screens right now. Then go ahead and open it like so. After that, I will go ahead and grab each one of my strips and I will place the raw side of the strip with the raw side of my circle. And we're going to be creating a sandwich. I'm going to be sandwiching all three things together. One side of the circle, the strip of the fabric, and another side of the circle. Here it's really important to note that I'm not really starting at the very middle where we place the pin to mark the center of the circle. I'm actually starting a little bit above that. And then I'm going to continue all the way to the other pin. Now I'm going to repeat that to both strips of the fabric. So you see here, everything is pinned together. Let me unpin this little part over here and you can see that these two strips don't really meet. There's a little bit of space in between and that's what we want. All right, we also need to leave an opening in order to turn everything right side out. So somewhere in the middle, definitely leave about two inch wide opening so that way we can turn it right side out once everything is sewn. Now we're going to sew from one pin all the way to the other pin, of course leaving that opening open. I will do that with a straight stitch within the seam allowance that I have chosen, back stitching at the very beginning and at the very end of my seam. Now that that is done, I'm going to go ahead and turn it right side out. This next step definitely makes everything so much easier and so much better looking as a result, not only when we're working with smaller DIYs like that, but also when we're sewing bigger projects like clothes. So oftentimes you'll hear me say, give it a really good press. Now in this area right over here where we left that opening, I'm just making sure that all of the seam allowances are pressed towards the inside of the project so I know that everything is kind of tucked away nicely. Now, as you can see here, I placed a little pin so that way I know where exactly I need to stitch. And I'm just going to go ahead and close that opening just with a straight stitch with a back stitch at the beginning and a back stitch at the end, just with a straight stitch over that opening. And now we're basically on the finishing line. Here, just go ahead and tidy up everything that you need to tidy up, all of the loose threads, anything else. Just, you know, maybe give it a really good press another time and go ahead and grab a ribbon or a cord, whatever you're using for this next step. And here a rule of thumb is it's better to cut it longer than to cut it short. So definitely make sure that if you're not necessarily 100% um, sure about how long to cut it, just cut it a little bit longer. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut the cord like so. And you will need to cut two of these pieces. Now go ahead and grab one of them and we're going to start on either side it just really doesn't matter so you're gonna go ahead place the cord inside you can do that with a safety pin and go ahead and thread it all the way through like this so you see the loose ends will meet and on the other side it will be like a little loop then go ahead and grab another one and do exactly the same thing but the opposite direction there we go and we're really almost done so now what I like to do is I just like to go ahead and give uh, the ends of the cord a little trim and then I also go ahead and tie them in a knot so that way it will prevent any of the thread or rope or ribbon whatever you're using kind of popping out of the pouch and I will do exactly the same thing on the other side as well and that's it your circle pouch is done and there we go whoop and you got yourself a really nice jewelry pouch, cosmetic pouch, little play mat, whatever it is that you're making.
Now I have two more projects to share with you. This one though is pretty self-explanatory and despite that, I mean, who does not know about scrunchies and handmade scrunchies, but a lot of you have asked exactly how I make them. And this is the same method that I used for making scrunchies last year for the farmer's market that I participated in. Now I'm not doing farmer's market this year, but I would love to share with you how I make my scrunchies. First, we gotta get started with the elastic. I use wide elastic, which is half an inch wide, and I feel that that works a lot better. And then for the fabric, I like to use something that's lightweight and flowy. I find that that works the best for scrunchies like these. And then I just usually use whatever leftover fabric that I have if I'm making a scrunchie for myself. If I'm making this for sale, of course, you wanna stick to one length and one width, but here, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm just gonna go ahead and tidy this up and cut this into one really long rectangle. Now, this fabric remnant is really small and this is actually left over from the wrap skirt tutorial that I did the other week. So I will be making this for my daughter. Now, this is how it looks when everything has been tidied up. It's about three inches wide and 20 something inches long. So really not a big one. And I did cut the elastic for it which was about seven inches long, just enough to be for a child. My daughter is about three years old, so this will be perfect. Now I also cut the other one just to show you that you can make a really nice full scrunchie with this method. This rectangle is about five inches wide and I would say about close to 50 inches long and the elastic for it is about nine inches. The first step for me is to take the rectangles, fold them in half, right sides together like so, and then I'm going to be stitching them as one really long tube. The steps for this one and for the blue one are going to be exactly the same. Now here's the thing that we need to remember. I don't wanna stitch from edge to edge. I actually wanna leave about two inches away from the edge of the rectangle from both sides, so from both ends. So when I'm going to be stitching with about quarter of an inch or three eighths of an inch seam allowance with a straight stitch, I want to make sure that I don't start at the very beginning, but I start and end at two inch mark from each end. And here you see how that looks right over here. I decided to choose purposefully this kind of like a bluish uh, thread so that way you can see a little bit better. Now what you want to do is you want to go ahead and put that tube inside itself. So we want to turn it right side out, but not all the way. So if if you did pull it through a little bit further, as you can see right now, I'm kind of like sucking it back in right over here because I want to match these ends. So I want to match the top seam with the top seam and the opening with the opening because right now I'm gonna go ahead and stitch them together. So I wanna stitch the short end. And as you can see, now I can actually pull it through. Just don't pull it through all the way. That will be our next step, but not just yet. So. I want to pull here just a couple of inches, just enough so that way I can close that large opening that we have right over here. So instead of leaving it as is, usually I go ahead and I stitch over those seams, those connection seams, and I place them right sides together. I usually try to match them up. So I stitch this part, this two inch part, and once that is done, then what I can do is I can go ahead and through the smaller opening, take a piece of scrunchie and pull it right through and then everything is really straightforward you take your elastic you insert into that little opening that we have left and you pull it through all the way once both ends of the elastic meet I overlap them by about half an inch and I secure them with multiple stitches of a zigzag stitch so that way I know that it's not going to come undone and then just go ahead and place your elastic back inside of your scrunchie, fluff it up. And the last thing that we need to do is to close that little opening that we used in order to turn the scrunchie right side out. And you can just go ahead and stitch over it with a straight stitch and be done with it. But a dear friend of mine, a sewing friend, actually sent me these beautiful little sewing labels. And I thought, you know, that would be such a beautiful touch to insert one of the labels into that little opening and then stitch over it. And that's exactly what I did over here. And that's it, your scrunchie is done. Here you can see the one that we made together. Here you can see the blue one with beautiful flowers. They're definitely different in size. So just use whatever you have, make most of the beautiful fabric scraps that you have left over from other projects, and you will have beautiful scrunchies for yourself, for your friends and family, and for gifts as well. This next one is 
going to be great for summertime and not only, but I'm going to be making it for my sunglasses. Now, of course, you can take the same principle and the same idea and apply it to whatever you would like. So you can make it for your readers, you can make it as a phone carrier, you can make it for your ID cards, I mean, you name it, so definitely have fun with it. Now, it's really important to know that no sunglasses are made the same. As you can see here, I have two pairs. One is my husband's, one is mine. And you can see how different they are in thickness when you actually fold them together. So you will need to take a look at your sunglasses and then make the case for those. Now here, we're gonna start with a simple shape as well with a rectangle. And I'm going to measure the width and the length of my sunglasses. And I will add a couple of inches to each side so that way I can account for the thickness of the sunglasses when they're folded together and make sure that they will fit inside of the case. Once I have my measurements, I went ahead and I made a rectangle. And if I take the sunglasses and put them inside, you will see that there's plenty of extra room on all sides, top to bottom and left to right. Now I want to copy that and make another rectangle just like this one, since the sunglass case that I'm making will have the front and the back. So here we have two exactly the same rectangles. And now I want to add some convenience in design elements. And for that, I literally just grabbed a roll of the painter tape that I have. I'm gonna use that as the stencil. So here I want to curve in one of the top parts of the rectangle, so that way it's a little bit easier for me to get the sunglasses out of the case. And as I'm outlining that curved part, you can see that I'm not lining it up with exactly the sides of the rectangle instead of leaving about a quarter of an inch from each side because that is going to be the seam allowance. And I also decided, you know what, let me just curve in the bottom of the case as well just to make it a little bit easier to sew. I don't have to pivot once I'm doing the stitches. Now I want to do the top, kind of like the flap, the closure part of the back pattern piece. Using the same principle, I'm making sure that the semicircle isn't going from side to side, but is actually a quarter of an inch away from each side of that rectangle. And there we go, I have these two pattern pieces. Now I'm going to be using the same faux leather sheet that I did in the first project of this tutorial. Make sure that you don't press too much on your pencil because you don't want those marks to be visible once you cut everything out. And now now I'm gonna go ahead and grab the cord and I want to make these little tabs where the cord is gonna go through so that way I can put it around my neck. And these tabs in them, dimensions of them, will definitely depend on what is the thickness of the cord or the ribbon or whatever you're using. So mine are about two inches long and one inch wide. And here I'm just gonna go ahead, cut them apart, fold them in half, and I'm gonna double check and test and see how the cord feels inside. And then I'm going to place them in a desired position on my pouch like so and you know what here I decided I'm just gonna go ahead and sew uh, with the cord together inside of it so that way I don't have to worry about pulling it through later. You also don't want to use any pins because pins will leave marks in faux leather material like this one so I'm just using clips. Again if you want to use fabric absolutely you can do so and I will leave the link for you guys where to find how to do that in just about a couple of minutes. So I'm just gonna go ahead and stitch from here to here. Starting with the back stitch and ending with the back stitch with a straight stitch, I'm gonna go ahead and sew the pouch. You might want to switch to a larger needle size when sewing thicker fabrics and materials like faux leather and denim. That will make it easier for you and make sure that you don't break the needle in the process. And it might get a little fiddly once you're sewing over the tabs just because there's so many layers of that faux leather but once you're past that it should be really easy and straightforward once that is done I'm gonna go ahead and tie the knots at the end of each cord if one knot doesn't do it make sure that you tie two and then of course I'm going to be using my beloved velcro dots since I already had them from the first tutorial of this video now you can use a snap you can use some sort of magnetic closure whatever you would like now if you would like to make the same sunglass pouch from a fabric and interfacing here's how you can do do it. Click on the video that you see on your screen right now. I do very similar project. I call it a mini wallet. I will explain in detail how to complete it with fabric and interfacing and you can apply the same exact principle to this sunglass case. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, happy 
thoughtful sewing, and I'll see you soon. Bye!